Professor Tribe, uh, go ahead. Donald Trump's absolute immunity uh, from a civil process, a civil lawsuit uh, because of January 6th. It's a remarkable claim, Lawrence. It's a claim that I'm not even sure Richard Nixon would have made. <laughs> Nixon actually invoked the claim of absolute immunity from certain kinds of civil lawsuits. There was one brought by a guy named Ernie Fitzgerald after Nixon's executive order reorganizing the Air Force. And after Nixon had left office, Fitzgerald sued Nixon, saying that he was reorganized out of a job and that the real reason the president did it was that he didn't like the way Fitzgerald had testified against him. The U.S. Supreme Court in 1982, in a case called Nixon v. Fitzgerald, uh, held that when the president is exercising his official duties, he cannot be held liable. Among other things, the court said, the desire to be reelected will deter the president from abusing his official duties. That's a good one applied in a case like this where the president had been voted out of office. The court also said that you could rely on Congress to check the president. That's a really good one in a case like this where the president is accused by Congressman uh, Swalwell of aiming an angry mob at the Capitol at Congress to prevent it from performing its function. The president's claim that it is part of his official duties to stay in office no matter what, even after he has been voted out by the people and by the Electoral College, really takes chutzpah to a new level. It says, I have a duty to you, my subjects. I can just hear George III in the background in, in the play Hamilton. I have a duty to you, my loyal subjects. Mm -hmm to remain in office, to prevent Congress from counting the electoral votes that would kick me out of office. If a president had an official responsibility, if it was part of his job description to hold on to that office even after he's voted out of it, and to do it even by trying to have his own vice president hung in front of the Capitol, by storming the Capitol, by killing Capitol Police, if that was part of the job description, then the job that would be described is dictator, not president. So it is not a claim that's likely to find favor, to put it mildly, with the courts of the United States. A, a, a possible illustration of, of what you're talking about in terms of official duties here is the distinction between, say, uh, Donald Trump on that day and Senator Hawley on that day. Uh, one might argue that Senator Hawley helped provoke an insurrection at the Capitol by uh, challenging the Electoral College vote. However, there is an official procedure that Senator Hawley was working within when he did that, and it might have been uh, encouraging to people, And uh, but, but he was working in an and a prescribed official procedure when he did that. Right. He was, in fact, exercising his role uh, as a member of Congress, however dis disgustingly he was doing it. And there is a clause in the Constitution, the speech and debate clause, that says that for any speech you make on the floor of Congress and for exercising your official duties, you can't be questioned in any other place. There is no such provision for the president. There is, however, a judicially created immunity. The court recognized and elaborated on it in the case of Nixon v. Fitzgerald, but it said it was part of the separation of powers, that you don't hold the president responsible in the Article III judiciary for his carrying out his Article II duties as president. Among other things, it said the impeachment power holds him in. That's also a good one in this case. Remember when a lot of the members of the Senate voted to acquit him, they said, including uh, Mitch McConnell said, he will follow him, uh, to use that quotation uh, from the tweet that you began with. The law will follow him. He will be held accountable. That's why we don't have to <clears throat> convict him. Well, this is the law holding him accountable. And he says, not me. I was president of the United States. 
he just has made a fundamental mistake. The president is not a sovereign. The president is not the uh, the king of us. He's not uh, he's not George the third. He is not even uh, George Washington. He is exercising power as an employee of the people of the United States. He answers to the people. And one of the ways you answer to the people is by being held accountable for the damages that you do when you aim an angry mob at members of Congress and others uh, who get severely injured as a result. Eric Swalwell in this lawsuit talks about how he thought he was going to die. He basically said goodbye to his wife and to his children because he was among the targets of this supposed exercise of official power. The president is trying to have it both ways and every way. He's trying, in fact, also to say that he had a First Amendment right to do what he did, a right that private citizens have, but not that the government has. And for him to say that he was really just being the government, doing the government's duty, doing his duty to American citizens when he fomented an insurrection, a violent insurrection to try to hold on to office, just pushes it way beyond the limit. And it's like the 13th chime of a clock. Whatever other defenses he might have in a lawsuit like this really become almost laughable when his basic defense is, you can't touch me. I was president of the United States. And for all we know, he's among those of his followers who says, I'm still president of the United States, if you want to know the truth. Um, <laughs> it won't wash. It's just not, it doesn't meet the laugh test, as we say in the law. 